Good afternoon, everyone. Time for part two of this Bitcoin report, cryptographic disruption. You can see here on Bitcoin, we're forming another pennant, so we'll see how that works out. Now, to summarize where we were last time, we went through a video um, from Jacob Applebaum about the militarization of the Internet. This is about the NSA to protect and infect you can see here that we're talking about a battle over the internet and communications. I'm trying to show you that just as Bitcoin is a disruptive technology based on cryptography, that new communications methods based on cryptography are also disruptive to the big brother police state. Watch everybody see what they do. And uh, so we're going through the Cicada 3301 project. Once we complete that, we're going to talk a little bit about TCP IP and how secure communications work on a very high level or low level, whichever way you want to put it. But let's get back to the Cicada 3301 project we'll call it. Now if you remember last time the people who were following this and remember it started at 4chan if you're going to try to find groups of hackers and anarchists you're probably gonna have a pretty good chance finding them on 4chan so that's where this message was posted as we go through this we're gonna see a narrowing down effect we're going to see here at this point with the website that we're going to be looking at groups of hackers. It's very important because for them to go to the next stage, you'll see here that it required a group working together. We don't know how many groups were working together on this. Uh, we don't know how large those groups were. Ultimately, we'll see in part two, especially that the breakdown ultimately came down to the individual and uh, this whole thing seems to be an attempt by an organization or group of organizations to isolate the best minds that are out there. You have to remember most of the people in the government, most of the people in the NSA, probably the CIA, various alphabet soup agencies probably aren't very technologically uh, capable and Certainly, they're not going to be on the level of some of the teenagers that we have right now. If you were born in the year 2000, you're 14, 13, 14 years old. If you were born in the mid-90s when the Internet came out, let's say, you're going to be around 20. So these are going to be people who grew up with this technology. These are going to be people who breathe this technology like air. And some of them are going to be more intelligent than anybody in the old guard ever could possibly hope to be. I believe that's who they're looking for. And we're going to see a warning when we get here into part two about what these people may be potentially getting themselves involved with. So let's get back to the narrative here. If you remember, there's a long series of clues that led us to this website. And it always has to do with cryptography has to do with prime numbers. You have to be fairly familiar with coding in Linux and you have to be fairly familiar with code breaking or at least have some idea how that works. So if you remember this website that was revealed in the last set of clues had a timer on it and it revealed that it was going to give a message at the end of that timer. Now I think the timer probably, and we see this again, there's a timer to let a certain number in, but not a lot. In other words, only the best are going to make it through the series of hoops. Ultimately, we get down to singling out individuals. So we have this website. We have a timer that's counting down. We have this PGP signed messages uh, so that we know they're coming from 3301. As the timer comes down, the solvers waited, waited, and waited. Finally, after what seemed like years, the website changed. 
reapplying outguess on the cicada image produced a new message containing coordinates as well as two which were written on the website itself and here are the coordinates these give I assume longitude and latitude to give a specific location on the earth these returned locations across the globe meaning that unless you had access to all these locations you'd be forced to collaborate with other users like the main IRC channel on November 4th at each of these locations brave solvers found a sheet of paper stuck to a telegraph pole with a QR code and an image of a cicada and there's the picture there I don't know if you clicked on this made it larger you could scan it in with a bar code scanner you probably read that code it took a while for this to sink in with the community that this wasn't just a talented neckbeard in the basement this was actually a global organization of some very talented people upon scanning these QR codes two different messages were revealed these are in 29 volumes knowledge we're gonna to have to scroll across here because it's uh, in a box here knowledge was once contained let me go ahead and just pull that out in 29 volumes knowledge was once contained how many lines of the code remained when the Mabin Medbinagon Gion, I don't know, paused, go that far in from the beginning and find my first name. And then you can see there's a series of numbers, product of the first prime, first prime, product of the first prime. And here's the next message. We'll just put this into the notepad. You've shared too much to this point. We want the best, not the followers. Thus, the first few there will receive the prize. Good luck, 3301, and followed with the signed message. And a poem of fading death named for a king meant to be read only once and vanish. Alas, it could not remain unseen. Product of the first two primes, product of the first two primes. You've shared too much at this point. We want the best, etc which the solvers knew to be book codes along with a description of each book. They also included a warning about too much collaboration, saying that only the first few or the active few that make it to the end will receive entry. The second code was found to have led to the poem Agrippa by typing in keywords from the description. This poem found here spat out the following after the book code was applied. And we have this address dot onion. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with onion addresses, onion addresses are Tor addresses. The Tor network is what we call the dark net, dark web. What it is, is a, think of it as an internet within the internet. So it takes advantage of these things called onion routers. The way that an onion router works or an onion router network works is that you have a whole bunch of nodes in this network similar to Bitcoin they're all connected together and what happens is when you are connected to this network and you're surfing the internet using this network uh, you are spat out at a random point on one of these Tor nodes so your exit point from that network is the IP address of that particular node the purpose of this is to discourage and even if possible make impossible the tracking of the person doing the surfing so it's a way to surf anonymously basically there's no way to know by the IP address that you display and you could go to something like now I haven't really played with Tor a lot I, I think I downloaded it used it one time it was incredibly slow and crawls uh, ridiculously slow and I don't really have anything that I'm doing that I need to hide but uh, we know that for example that the uh, Silk Road was a site hosted on this 
dark net or dark web and so you have the ability to hide who you are and you also have the ability to hide where these things are hosted so this is a site that's hosted within that onion router network that basically doesn't have a particular presence on the internet it doesn't have a specific location that can be tracked down by the authorities and shut down similar to Bitcoin it's a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized internet that's a way to think of it which most of us will know to be a hidden service on the Tor network by entering this page into a Tor equipped browser users found the following message GPG signature removed congratulations please create a new email address with a public free based web service one you've never used before and enter it below we recommend you do this while still using Tor for anonymity we will email you a number within the next few days in the order in which you arrived at this page once you've received it come back to this page and append a slash and then the number you received to the URL for example if you received this number then you would go to HTTP onion address that number 3301 the way these pages are run is that everything publicly available will go in part one and everything that wasn't publicly available will go into part two. So this is the person who put this wiki together explaining to you that we've now reached the end of what was publicly avail available on this search and we'll see in the second uh, cicada contest it ended the same way but it was much more difficult. So. It ends at the point where an individual is contacting this group. This is when it went dark. Now, the rest of it is contained into part two, and that is what we don't know. It wasn't publicly available. We have to uh, trust what was revealed by the participants who supposedly reached the end of this and were contacted. For the 2012 puzzle, it did not initially end at the first series of puzzles. If you want to cut to the chase and get straight to the emails received, go to part two. So in part two, this is what those people who went and signed up and sent them an email address were given. And this is only what we're told. We don't know if this is true. This message will only be displayed once. Here is a message that has been encrypted, etc it gives the encrypted message etc from here nobody knows what really happened as the original puzzle was not very well documented in its end stages like the second puzzle was and we're gonna see the second puzzle was very very difficult test for individuals and uh, only the most advanced individual in cryptography writing code networking uh, programming some personality tests based on some type of anarchic principles only individuals who pass all those tests would be able to reach the final stage hopefully one day this will come to light but after receiving this email every person that did so went completely dark as if they had disappeared from the internet nobody knew how deep the rabbit hole went but all the solvers could agree it was the deepest they'd ever seen edit after the RSA puzzle, people who submitted correct answer to their individual RSA puzzle, each person had a different one to web page, received another email with MIDI puzzle. MIDI puzzle and solution can be found there. If you don't understand how Cypher was solved, ask in this number. Solution was a string of few random words. Those that sent encrypted PGP signed email with their words were later invited with the infamous leaked email. What happened after this is still mostly not known, apart from a few slips when some people told a bit more about what was going on later. Logs of these testimonies can be found in Unfiction, and you can click the link. Legitimacy of those is not confirmed. It might just be trolling. And then after an entire month of no communication publicly from 33, Cicada 3301, the following message was posted on the subreddit from the start hello we have found the individuals we sought thus our month-long journey ends for now thank you for your dedication and effort if you were unable to complete the test there will be more opportunities like this one thank you all 3301 
So this one indicates that there is going to be another one. Uh, this is the final message received from Cicada in 2012, and it was confirmed to be them, of course, we know, by this PGP or GPG GNU signature, and mentions of it popped up the rest of the year. By the way, today, the 4th of January 2014, is supposedly or rumored to be the beginning of the third uh, test of Cicada or trial. So let's go to part two or the second puzzle. This is 2013's puzzle. And we'll look at part one of 2013's puzzle. It had been exactly 366 days since the 2012 Cicada puzzle began. Nothing had happened in 11 months until the 5th of January 2013 when a second image was posted to slash x slash and slash b slash image boards on 4chan. There were three threads or 3301 posted 232.jpg on 4chan two times on b 23 hours apart and once on x. There was another thread one day earlier B thread on the fourth that mentioned warning paste bin and SMS for tour service. Now we want to look at the warning that was posted. This warning paste bin is very interesting because the warning paste bin was a person who claimed to be involved with the cicada group from the beginning and we definitely want to look at this because it's going to be important as to whether or not this thing is legitimate or this thing is bogus now there's a couple of takes you can have on this and we want to look at this warning I apologize for the sometimes improper language in this text. English is not my first language. I've also used software to mask authorship, so 3301 Cicada does not know who publishes this. Thank you. I was part of what you call 3301 Cicada for more than a decade, and I'm here to warn you, stay away. This is a dangerous organization. While I agree with many of the goals, their ways are nefarious. In fact, I think it is like a left-hand path religion distinguished as a progressive scientific organization. I realize that this is a strong statement, but I will provide important evidence to support these claims. For those of you who have not heard of organized 3301 Cicada, I will share some background information using publicly referenceable. According to leaked documents during the last round of recruitment, they are much like a think tank in that their primary focus is on researching and developing techniques to aid the ideas they advocate. Liberty, privacy, and security. This is partly true. This is what initially attracted me many years ago. The first public appearance was the recruitment campaign that began in parts that cannot be mentioned of the internet were targeted hackers and programmers and people with strong background with a series of puzzles of increasing difficulty. This has been well documented over the internet and will not I will not repeat it here. The tests cover a wide range of topics, cryptography, steganography, the number theory, classical literature, art, darknet, computer schools, including programming, philosophy, music, etc. Even more interesting is the fact puzzle used multiple forms of communication, the internet, phone, darknet, Tor, and the physical world even in the form of papers of 14 that appear simultaneously in all parts of the world North America Europe Asia and Australia as was presented each puzzle that was solved by fewer individuals what was initially several thousand workers solving puzzles in the beginning very few solved all less than 1% in fact this of course was the intention I was not directly involved in these tests and in fact I do not agree with the idea of recruiting from the public right from the start until that moment all recruitment was done in person by people who know recruits now this is very important because this is going to get at what we're talking about 
the core of this cryptographic disruption war that we're seeing going on here. The reason I believe that the recruitment was done publicly is because we're now reaching a stage in this war where they need the smartest people. Now, we know from the creation of these various companies started in garages, whether it's Cisco, Microsoft, Apple, or any of these others, big, big, big tech companies. We know they were started by high school dropouts or hackers. They're not people who are in the system. The system traditionally has never produced the smartest people. In fact, we have schools out there like ITT Tech and other schools out there precisely because our college system was so far behind the advancement that occurred in the internet that people coming out of college were simply unqualified to do anything and this was all done by startups it was done by hackers it was done by teenagers and this is the case today so we have generations of teenagers who've grown up with this technology now uh, a, a generation of teenagers large numbers of them who are going to be more advanced, especially the ones on the cutting edge of the hacking community, they're going to be more advanced than anyone, including the people who've been studying this stuff all their lives. That's why I believe this recruitment, uh, which was done in person, as he says, is no longer done in person, it's being done publicly. That's what's behind this Cicada 3301 project. I was recruited in the organization when I was an officer in the service of my country for many years. I was a career officer and showed great promise and was quickly promoted. Finally arrived at a high position and was approached by my superior. I will not say titles for anonymity. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he goes into how he got involved and uh, then he goes into the type of person. Now he's going to talk here about the type of belief system these people have. As it turned out, my opinions and goals were very much in line with that organization at the political level. I leaned towards freedom, which was called at the time. I'm well educated in science, mathematics, and foreign policy. I was non-religious at the time of these first days. Philosophically, I agree with the ideas of Sartre, Nietzsche, and Kierkegaard. Now, if you're not familiar with them, these are the existentialists and uh, that was something that I was and studied uh, back in college as well. These are existentialists who believe that there is no meaning outside of the meaning that man gives things. So there is no ultimate truth. Uh, there is no ultimate answer except the answer that we provide. And so I believe in random universe, one in humans that were not more than a coincidence no absolute moral right and wrong that's very essential there's no moral right and wrong that the value of man is what he does i also believe that we can and should aspire to reach the next level as individuals and mankind as a whole and this is getting into uh, the um, i i can't remember the term not synchronicity but the uh, uh, man machine etc I'll, I'll think of it. Uh, Nietzsche's Ubermensch, now if you're not familiar with Nietzsche, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the term was the singularity. The Ubermensch is basically German, this for the Superman uh, was the next stage, that, uh, and uh, we can see hints at that in the Nazis, and uh, who frequently cited Nietzsche as well. I didn't know then, but this is one of the main focuses of the cicada. They believe they possess wisdoms to transform humans to Ubermunch. Cicada give knowledge to members slowly as they progress up the pyramid. So here we see this type of, we'll call it Masonic Illuminati type of progression, where at the beginning, and we'll see it later when we talk about the compartmentalization of the organization. The people who enter in at the beginning are given very little information. They have to slowly progress up the pyramid and more information is revealed to them. We know with the secret societies, whether it be the Illuminati, Jesuits, Masons, take your pick, or whichever one of these that you want, that uh, people are also given vows that they have to take 
So as they progress up the pyramid of knowledge and more is revealed to them as they go higher and higher in the Masons, it's the degrees, but as they go higher and higher in these secret societies, more is revealed to them, but at the same time they are more committed because of the oaths that they've taken so that they're unable to extricate themselves from these secret societies. So it appears the cicada is that type of thing here. It is a cryptographic secret society that is trying to build a alter an army of the most technologically advanced hackers and recruit them into we don't know. Is this the NSA recruiting? Is this anonymous recruiting? Is this some other group recruiting? We can only guess at that. So we're going to leave it off here at this warning. We'll continue in part three. Just to summarize here, we're talking about the disruptive nature of Bitcoin. It's a disruptive technology that is disrupting and will be disrupting for quite some time the current banking systems and methods of transferring wealth from one place to another. We're going to get into the concepts behind cryptography and how a person is able to send a message from one computer over to another computer on the internet on IP addresses and Basically, this form of communication, if it is in this tunnel, we'll call this a tunnel, that's what we use conceptually to understand an encrypted pathway between two points. This tunnel is the basis of the disruption of the listening to communications because ultimately this point here is going to be the only point that can understand the communication of this point and vice versa. So to be able to listen to this information, this tunnel cannot be broken based on cryptography. So the listening is going to have to occur more towards the end point. That was what we were seeing with the technologies described by, I'm sorry, Jacob Applebaum in this protect and infect video. The idea that the NSA and other agencies, we don't know who they are, are involved in trying to infect the endpoints so that they're able to continue and not be disrupted by this technology, cryptography. And we'll talk to you in part three.